One of the important issues to understand about this technology was that in the first decade of commercialization, there was a trade war basically between the exporters of these crops in North America and South America and Europe. However, when we look to the second decade of commercialization, 2006 to 2015, this will be entirely different. Why? Because as you create wealth in countries like China, as you create more demand for meat, there will be more demand for corn, for rice. And the important point to note is that all of this increased production will be consumed within the country. Trade is not involved. The big challenge is to produce the food that is expected to provide a better quality of life in the developing countries of the South. And there are five countries involved, the big five. China and India in Asia. What China is to Asia, Brazil is to Latin America, the engine of growth, Argentina and South Africa. When biotech crops were introduced in 1996, the thought was that this technology was for the industrial countries, for the large farmers, for the rich. Indeed, when we look back at the experience of the last 14 years, nothing could be further from the truth. Almost half of the global acreage of 135 million hectares is now grown by the developing countries. And as we look to the remaining years of the second decade of commercialization, we believe that the growth will be in the developing countries of the world. And if we look at the number of farmers using this technology today, they number 14 million on a global basis. Remarkably, 90% of those farmers are small, resource-poor farmers in developing countries that represent some of the poorest people in the world. So this technology has done two things for developing countries. It has increased the productivity of food, feed and fiber crops. And secondly, it has allowed us to address the very important issue of alleviating poverty. We as a global society have said that we will cut poverty and hunger by 50% by 2015. That's the Millennium Development Goal year. This technology can make a very important contribution to that promise. Biotech crops over the period 1996 to 2009 have experienced unique growth rates. In fact, it is the fastest adopted crop technology in the history of agriculture. Faster than the adoption of semi-dwarf rice during the Green Revolution and the adoption of semi-dwarf wheat. Faster than the adoption of hybrid maize in the Corn Belt in the US in the 1930s. Now some of the opponents of this technology say that this technology has done nothing for nobody. Contrast that with the experience of 85 million farmers in 25 countries over a 14 year period who once they have used this technology are repeat customers up to 100% adoption. So we have to decide who to believe, whether you believe the opponents of this technology who have not had first experience with the crop and if they are right then 85 million farmers in 25 countries are all wrong. We should ask the farmers and what we see is that small farmers from China to South Africa to the Philippines know that this technology has delivered benefits. If we take the Philippines using insect resistant corn they have been able to increase their income by 40 percent. That has provided poor farmers with the opportunity of building a kitchen something that they had promised their wives for 15 years. For the first time, they've been able to buy books for the kids to go to school. In some cases, in the poorest areas, shoes. The only reason that farmers adopt this technology 
is because it delivers benefits. We believe that farmers are the masters of risk aversion. If the technology does not work, they are the first to reject it. If it works, then they are very creative professionals. They will find a way of accessing this technology. That is the proof that is in the pudding. I believe that the decision by China on the 27th of November 2009 to approve insect-resistant rice and a maize that increases the efficiency of meat production has been the most important decision in 2009. Why? China happens to have half the pigs in the world. It increased from 5 million in 1968, amazingly, to over 500 million in 2009. That's a hundredfold increase. So with this technology in maize, they can increase the productivity and efficiency of pork production. There are approximately 100 million households in China that are dependent on maize. They have 30 million hectares, second in the world after the US, which grows about 35 million. The figures for insect-resistant rice is even more impressive. There are 250 million rice households in Asia. With an average family size of four, that's equivalent to around one billion people. This is what insect-resistant rice has as an opportunity for a country like China and for Asia, which consumes 90% of the world's rice.